podcast. Welcome. This is episode nine and today we are going to talk about what we're working on, uh, what new needles Misty got, and a book review of Sock Architecture by Laura Neal. And we have a giveaway. We have a giveaway winner and we have a new giveaway prize. So you just got new needles. I got new needles and unfortunately they're in my mom's car. <laughs> Sorry about that, but um, I really like them. They are the Chagu 9 inch circulars and I was very doubtful. I was like, I don't know about this, but I've seen so many people say that they are faster and that was the key to get me to try them. Faster? <laughs> Let me see them. So um, I've been working on the bootstrap sock, which that's the project that I left in my mom's car over the weekend. <laughs> and so, um, I, I, <laughs> me and my perfectionist, if, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw where I had knit so far and decreased and then knit in the, in the movies and it changed my pooling of, um, spiraling in my sock and it drove me nuts and I had to rip it out <laughs> to the heel and start over. And so when I started over at the heel, I started back with those nine inch circs and mm -hmm. I was knitting Continental, which I really like. I've I've been practicing and I'm getting better. Now, and so I really like that. And in case you don't know, Continental is when you, the yarn is in your left hand and you kind of <laughs> pick at it versus throwing it around your needle. Yes. So the yarn is like over here. And I and learned just... English and like my mom, the way that she learned, she takes her... Um, she takes her yarn and she has it in her right hand, but she stops everything and wraps it around the needle. She like picks her fingers up and wraps it around. I didn't do that the way that I, and I, I hope this fascinates you guys because I love to see it and other people knit. I held it like this, like I was knitting Continental. A lot of people who knit Continental, this is how they hold it. And I just wrapped it around with this finger is how I, I managed to knit right handed. And so I still knit pretty fast that way, um, but I've had some issues with my hand lately, and so I wanted to give it a break and try Continental, and I've gotten good at it. I still don't trust myself with it enough to knit on my <laughs> sweater that way. I'm like, no, it might change my gauge or my stitches might not look as even, and so since I started out my sweater knitting English, I won't switch over you know, to it because it does, yeah. it, it seems like for me, at least I'm a tad bit looser and it's, it, I'm not too messy. Like, like my stitches don't look overly messy, but I prefer practicing on something like a sock or something like, you know, garter stitch where it's just not going to show up and bug me, you know, the pickiness <laughs> that I have, you know, so, but anyway, I finished the one sock. I'll, I'll show you guys next week, and I wanted to mention it since we are going to do the book review of Sock Architecture. I'm really enjoying that book. I enjoyed the pattern. I enjoyed the heel. It was really neat. It fits really good, which I'm very happy because yeah. I think I'm going to have to give away a pair of my socks to oh, my I mom. Know. Yeah, I knit. Um, it was just the patent Croix. Um, oh yeah, you showed thing. those. I like them, but they're really tight across the top of my foot, where mm -hmm. my where your leg meets your foot, you know, right there at your ankle. And so I did the fish lips kiss heel, which I really liked on there. But I think um, I think she does one that's deeper mm -hmm. that maybe I could try next time. But the the sock is just not giving enough, and it it's noticeably tight, and so it it bugs me. And I think I'm just gonna. Say Merry Christmas, Mom, because I already, <laughs> I gave her that, um, which I can't believe I gave it to her, but I gave her that rainbow um, cow that I made, and so she's already, I was like, I can't wait till Christmas for that, so she really wasn't going to have anything, which I'm sure she won't, I know her, she will not mind a hand-me-down, so, but I've only worn a couple times. So but so you like the 9-inch circular? I do, I like the 9-inch circulars, um, give them a try, it does take a little bit of getting used to, it's a little bit fiddly at first, but once you get you know, into your groove and into the sock, um, it's not too bad. And I thought that it might bug me where you have to, you know, just kind of, you know, when you're knitting around, you've got to scrunch your stitches around. But you get used to that after a bit. And really, um, uh, especially with me knitting Continental, it um, is faster than your needle and yarn management with double points. Where you have oh, to switch yeah. your things around, and if yeah. you have it in your, you know, in your in your right hand, you know, just kind of re 
yeah. setting every time you change That's why needles. I don't like double points because yeah. I don't like that stop every time. I feel like it's a chance to set down your knitting yeah. every time. Yeah. <laughs> and like so I'm, uh, I'm knitting socks right now, which I'll talk about the yarn another time, but I'm knitting socks right now on um, Magic Loop because um, of the this was special yarn that I needed to do two at a time. And so I'm knitting these on a magic loop. And I think that the Ninth Cirque is going to be my favorite out of yeah. all of them. I didn't think I would like to, to be switching back, like on the heel and toe, be switching. But really, that's, I think Not that's a problem. Just, no, I don't think it's going to be, you know, aggravating like I thought it would be. Um, so, yeah. Well, and speaking of Chaigu needles, everybody on Instagram this week has oh, been yeah. talking about that they're available on at Tuesday morning. At Tuesday morning. I went this week. And they did have some for like three bucks. However, they did not have the red lace Which ones, we, we which both love. We both love. <laughs> and they have the super pointy uh, tips and the red cable. And um, I really like them. And they didn't have those. The, the, their, the, the ones that they had were comparable to the regular Addies. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I've got a set of those that I'm knitting with and I'm not thrilled with but those. But $3 is an amazing Three, price. If you <laughs> are on a budget, I highly recommend you go and try and get some because it's an amazing price. Um, they taper at the end. I don't like that either, but I'm picky, so don't go <laughs> by me. If you're on a budget, anything will work, you know? I mean, so, uh, but yeah, it, 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 the, the metal bends to kind of, um, oh, the other ones you were talking about, yeah. the Chiaga ones. Yeah, they yeah, have the a... other Chiaga ones, the metal bends, and it kind of tapers onto the, the cable. So, yeah. But yeah. they might get red lace. We, the, we they again. may, because I think I've seen someone picture a red lace in one of theirs, but I went through, like, they hadn't even put them out. I had to ask for them. <laughs> and she's like, I've got some, I think I've got some in this cart. You're welcome to dig through it. And so I did. I dig through the, her nice. cart that, and pulled out everything, and they didn't have any. So check. It's worth a trip if you can get yeah. and that was needles for three bucks. Tuesday's mornings. They're like a kind of discount. Yeah. Higher end gifty, discounty. Yeah. You can find some neat stuff there. I found a little stocking stuffer for the kids while I was there. <laughs> for four awesome. Bucks, so, awesome. You know. Awesome. So, um, I I didn't buy anything new, but what I'm working on is again, if you're my mom and you're watching, stop and go away. Click off this, close it. I don't think she's watching, but if she is, stop right yes. now. Okay, so now that my mom's not here, I'm working on Isabel, which is a here, let's hold it closer so you can see it's so beautiful. Um, and it's got a garter, which is flipped up now, a garter yeah. bottom, and this is the panel. Here, I'm afraid it's gonna fall off my needles. Oh, <laughs> and yeah, let's on do that. either front. And Love this is color. all I've worked on. This is the only project I brought to talk about today. But you can see the color has awesome variation. You can see that's a slip stitch pattern on both fronts. And you might be able to see that I have done, I think, 12 decreases now. So my rows are so much shorter. So this is obviously bottom up. And it's a, it's a swingy coat cardigan, kind of like goes down over your bum. And it is has got like a little dip in the back. I talked about last week how I made that dip a little less big. My my bottom wants to keep flipping up. Hopefully when I block it, yeah. that'll be done. I'm knitting um, with two balls at a time to make sure the color doesn't pull. This is Plucky Knitter Feet, and it's not pulling. The color's Icy Audrey. I love the color. Really the, color. the light, I feel like you can't properly see it. But you can see mm. how there's like variation in the color, but there's not massive pools anywhere. No. And so what I'm doing though, instead of, um, since there's no extra knit on uh, front, you're actually knitting the front as you go. Instead of changing the yarn here, which would show up, I'm changing the yarn here. You're looking at the front, but so you can see the yarn change in the back. Very, very like, see how I've changed every other row. Down here I was changing I think like every four. Um, and it's cool. super hidden. Not like my ends, you know, you can't, I love it <laughs> because it's so hidden. Because if you did that on the, the first stitch of the row, you would have that row of yarn 
on the edge, making one edge look different than the other edge. And hopefully this will block out this curling. I have high hopes that it won't curl up like that. That makes me crazy. But it feels really good. Did you squish it? Yeah, it, it does. Feels, it feels nice. I it's, think it'll be even nicer once you wash it, too. Yeah, because it's not... Well, and I have. I washed my swatch, and it feels great. But it's not a, like, smooshy, super luxe yarn, because I know... That my mom's gonna wear it all the time, <laughs> and so it's a it's a yarn that's made for socks. It's merino and nylon, and the I picked it so that it's hard wearing because with a cardigan you're gonna put it on over things a lot, and the underarms and I don't want it to. That's my mom smart. likes to like save things I give her and not use them, <laughs> and so yeah. I want her to use it. So I made it out of a really durable, washable, um, and it's super wash yarn. Uh, so what are you working on? I am working on Ooh. the Mayuki. Yeah. I think that's how you say Here, it. Can we Cal? hold it up? Let me hold a picture of the okay. it's supposed to look like. It's, <laughs> um, it's done out of worsted. And um, it's so this is, pretty. This is my yarn that I've dyed. And Ooh. I know it's really dark. I know that, you know, In and I knew lighting. that going in that, you know, it's dark but it, and it's going to be kind of lacy. But I was, I wanted, it's a gift, and so I wanted to do a cow because that's kind of what she, my friend had mentioned that she wanted. And for some reason, I looked and looked and looked at patterns, and it's hard. I only had one skein of this, and it's a really beautiful plum color. It is gorgeous. Okay, that's I almost good. think like eggplant. Yeah, and it's really or something. pretty color. And so mm. I only had one um, skein of it, and... Um, I was trying to find a project that would work with just one skein, which was kind of hard. And um, this is what I ended up with. I looked and looked and looked and looked. And even though it was dark, I think that maybe if she wears it on maybe a lighter color, it'll yeah. you can see the little lace better once and it'll also, block out. Yeah, once it's blocked. So I think it'll be pretty. And it um, gets closer to your neck. I think it decreases some as oh, it goes nice. up. So it's shaped a little bit. It's shaped, and I just started this yesterday. So this will be, you know, I got that <laughs> really much done. It'll project. be a quick project. It'll be I good. I love it. It's so pretty. It's yeah. gorgeous. And then you're also working on your blue sand cardigan, right? I am, and I got a lot done on that one. And I'm so jealous. So mine, so we're both making the blue sand cardigan, but mine is on hold while I finish this because it's a Christmas gift. And as we record, it's like November 23rd. And I'm using my little U clips. Oh, you guys ever have issues with your uh, knitting falling off your needles or your kids or dogs or whatever messing with it <laughs> these this little thing is super handy your needles fit in there and you just clip it down and, and we talked very, about those yeah. a couple weeks ago and there is a coupon code in our Ravelry group we forgot that, to mention it last week is it still in there is it still good oh yeah okay she listed a new coupon code if you oh, okay, are okay. a um and there's a couple other businesses as well who have listed coupon codes in our Ravelry group if you want to get a U clip go and get the code so that she knows we sent you and this is so beautiful so this is it <laughs> it's down to the hem and can we hold it closer yeah here's the the pattern texture stitch on the hem and I've split for the pockets I didn't know oh. how that would work but you knit this little I cord thing I don't even know yeah it's an I cord with live stitches and so then you um put part of your um sweater stitches on uh, waist yarn and then add this in there instead and keep knitting and so here is the here's the top of the pocket and then the inside I'll pick up a knit and it'll be um striped have you put it on yourself yeah yeah <laughs> well you don't have to if you don't want to but it's so um, beautiful Oh, and it's so, like, thick. I know. I don't know if I like that about it or it, not. You can't see. but Yeah, no, totally. Long. It is. They can't see, but they I can see, see it. It fits you awesomely. Yeah, it's fitting really well. And it matches the shirt you're wearing. It matches the shirt. <laughs> As you can see, this is one of my favorite colors. But, yeah, it's good and squishy, um, and it's a little thick. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, uh, I mean, I guess it's a good thing. It's, it's winter time. A, well, yeah, exactly. And I mean, we've had snow just yeah. like a week ago, so it'll it's be awesome. It's supposed to be one of the worst winters ever, so we're preparing. <laughs> we're preparing. I'm hoping to get it done by Christmas. I mean, you think, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I have two sleeves to do, and then the front all the way, or, you know, pick up and knit all the way around the front. And um, probably this much more I've knit like this much I've got this much more of the bottom texture yeah and it's an easy easy pattern easy stitch mm -hmm. but still 
Yeah, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So I'm hoping, you know, even with me knitting <laughs> gifts that I said I wasn't going to do. Yeah, you got sucked so, into it, didn't I you? Sucked, I sucked myself. <laughs> it's, it's my own fault. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully I will have time to get that. <laughs> well, I would love beautiful. to wear on Christmas or like see. maybe New Year's Day because yeah. that gives you another week and that week in between Christmas and New Year's is pretty chill usually yeah. right yeah um so now do we want to talk about the book sock architecture yes okay so she knit a sock from it what's the name of the sock you knit from it bootstrap socks yes and oh we should say first that we were given this uh we're both given a copy of the book for free by cooperative press who's also the publisher of my book market yourself uh so i'm i'm biased that much <laughs> i guess because sure. i i know and like the publisher and the book was free um but the book is awesome and we're both like pulling it up so here is the cover oh so here i want to show you the patterns I if, love if this about the digital copies. You can yes. see them all, and then you can touch whichever one you want to, and it'll go right to it. I and think that's awesome. What I thought was, like, what most struck me about this book, so this is the cover on my Kindle. I don't know if you can see with the light. Sock Architecture by Laura Neal. It's awesome because she talks all about the actual architecture, the structure of the um, sock. Are you trying to get your iPad? Yeah, it's not older, <laughs> and it's... It's very particular, but this is the bootstrap sock, and you can see the little detail that goes down, and it has a heel that I will not try to pronounce. It's a ball <laughs> brigand or something. Oh like yeah, that. so it's so what's interesting about this book is that she gives you multiple heels and toes mm -hmm. and from t cuff down to and toe up. Yes. Whereas a lot of books focus on one or the other, like whatever the um person prefers they focus on that yeah she is like a sock knitting guru and, this, and you can tell she's really passionate about it I liked um uh in the front she's just you know picking it up to read it she's went to like um museums and took pictures of the the you know hand knit things from years old and exactly yeah and so it's 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 like she's geeking out with it. And I just exactly. love that about it. You know, that's not a bad thing. That's just awesome. It so. is awesome. And I like love, so there's lots of actually writing in it. Yeah. Like a lot mm -hmm. of knitting books are just patterns, but there's several chapters of first kind of history talking about maybe mm -hmm. where some of the heels and toes came from the East versus the West. And then she goes into like how to pick one for your foot yeah. and how to measure your foot. And I love that she includes this workbook that says like my foot measures and she tells you to put in the numbers and then do the math to figure out how many stitches your ideal, or if you're knitting for somebody for a gift, mm -hmm. how many stitches a sock would have versus telling you do this many stitches. Yeah. So that way you really get a sock that fits yeah, you. Yeah, very customizable. Um, and then and she like, makes suggestions yeah. for, and this is all before the patterns, what kind of heel and toe to use if your foot is wide mm -hmm. or... Um, she also talks about their toes, like if they're tapered versus square, which I love that because Jay and I have really different toe setups. So socks that I like, he, if I knitted him a pair of socks that I would like, they don't fit him right, which we have tried in the past. Um, I was out somewhere when I ended up starting on my toes. And so I just kind of quickly picked a toe that was in the in the pattern she gives you two or three i feel like you should this show this pattern. picture too oh yeah this is the let's okay there it comes to focus this is the picture of what the heel looks like when you're done it's really neat you have to graft maybe eight stitches together there at the center and um it's it's just really neat and i didn't mind i thought it would be a pain to pick up the stitches but the way you slip the first stitch on every mm -hmm. row, so it was glaringly obvious, how, you know, you, you peek yeah. up here, and it made it super easy to pick up stitches. So yeah. it wasn't an issue at all. And um, I, it also, I wonder, I was not sure how it would fit, you know, mm -hmm. after having that issue with the, with the sock not fitting on the other one, I was not sure how it would fit. I mean, yeah, it's different yarn, but um, I knit it with the yarn I dyed. But yeah, mm -hmm. it, it fit great. Awesome. And so, um, and she talks uh, about that, that issue you had with the fish slips heel. She talks about the, the, um, cup. heel not being deep enough. Yeah. And that's always been my problem is that the, when I do a short row heel, which I prefer knitting wise to the whole flap and gusset thing. And it, it's never been deep enough and my ankles are fat anyhow. <laughs> and then it like, it pulls across the top. Yeah, that happened when I made Jade's 
socks and um so she talks about how to make the heel deeper and also wider if your foot is like flatter and wider and she talks about high arches which I have so I was like I've learned so much. I haven't even knit one of the socks, but it's already changed how I'm knitting. That was a pair of socks I've been working on for a day. It's yeah. already changed what I'm going to do with the heel. I mean, like, something as simple as instead of doing the short row heel over 50%, do them over 60%. Because obviously you'll do more knitting, so yeah. it'll be deeper. That's awesome. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm, like I said, I've only knit a few pair of socks successfully. <laughs> so, um, at first, you know, reading through this, it was really overwhelming to me, but I'm like, I just need to do it. That's kind of a learner I am. I need to, I need to go yeah. and do it. And so yeah. after doing it, I really enjoyed the heel. I enjoyed the pattern. I enjoyed the book. I did the short wide toe, by the way. Um, but that was, I just kind of picked one because, um, I had knit to a point where I had thought, and that's what, <laughs> I only had that much left, so I did the short one, and all, but it, it looked great, and it fit great, and so. So you'll show it to us next week. Yeah, I'll show it to you next, next week, but yeah, I really, I really like this book. I like that, how much customization you can do with it yeah. to, to your own foot, um, how many different options you have for heels and toes, because for some reason. I don't want to settle with one. I, I don't want to pick one and say, oh, well, I like this. This one's fine. I'm done. Right. I want to try out all of them and, and to play. And so, yeah, yeah I really and like she, that. And she, like, in the actual pattern, she includes a working out the custom sizing for the socks. So yeah, for that The first couple chapters sock. tell you all about different heels, different toes, which ones you might pick. But then she actually, when she gives you the pattern you can customize that exact pattern. And if you're a more advanced sock knitter and you know that you're a 64 stitch size one girl, then you don't have to go through and do all this customization. You can still enjoy the patterns that she has and enjoy trying some different heels um, and just try, maybe customize your heel or something or your toe mm -hmm. or something. But yeah, if you already know what works for you, you don't have to do all this math in order exactly. to exactly um, make these, you know, use these patterns. Yeah, which I love. Yeah. And I'm like, I geek out over the, all of the extra information that like, I might not use anytime soon, but just reading it, like when I buy a knitting book, that's what I want. I very rarely ever buy pattern books because you're going to make maybe one or two patterns out of the book. They might be inspiring and beautiful and give you ideas, but I really like to buy books that actually teach me something about knitting so that I can apply it to anything else I make. And so this book is awesome for that. Yes. And we, I think we both highly recommend it. I do. Oh. I'm not, I'm very frugal. I don't buy a lot of books, but this one's definitely worth owning. <laughs> and they have some, she's got some really pretty um, textured um, sock patterns. She has some very plain sock patterns so that if you want to just focus on heels and toes, you can. But she has some really pretty um, textured. And one more thing I wanted to say about it is that the patterns that she gives you Many of them have both cuff down and toe up version mm -hmm. of the same pattern, so you don't have to change it yeah, so based on you, how you want to knit it. Right. If you're already, you know, into one, or if you're like, okay, I'm trying everything new today, <laughs> we're going to do toe up. So, you know, you can go for both. And I love it. So, if you found like a, a pattern in there you really liked, cuff down, and then you wanted to do it toe up, you could. Mm -hmm. And it was the same pattern. This one's really pretty. That's really pretty. And so this is Sock Architecture by mm -hmm. Cooperative Press, or by Laura Neal, published by Cooperative Press. We will have a link in our show notes, which you'll find at handmadepodcast.com. Oh, and did I tell you? I posted a picture of my finished sock on my project page, and she uh -huh. asked to use it for her, for the, for the, you know, the pattern page for this pattern. Awesome. So that was special. I so, was like, oh, she likes me. <laughs> we will also link to Misty's uh, bootstrap sock so that you can see the wonderful picture. <laughs> And um, I think next we, we're going to talk about, oh, you said uh, one of our listeners, watchers, Carrie Pickle. Yes, I feel so bad that I forgot to mention her last time. Um, she met with me at SAF too, and she was so sweet. We got to walk around with her, and it was so nice to get to know her. And um, she recently has started a podcast, and you can find it on YouTube. I don't think she has a website as of yet. But on YouTube, it's called Carrie Crafts, and it's spelled C-A-R-E-R-E-E, -E -E, Crafts. Yes, and she's so cute. And she watchable. is. She's adorable, and I really enjoyed watching her. And sometimes I, I personally prefer when you have two people on there because sometimes, you know, 
it just isn't as much with one. But I really do like uh, watching her. <laughs> we She's like you, just Gary. Adorable. We like you, Gary. <laughs> and um, and then next we have the giveaway to. Is that it for news? We want to mention Gary's podcast, and then um, the so. <sighs> Last, uh, the last giveaway we had was if you commented on our last Ravelry thread, you'd be entered to win a skein of my hand spun dyed by Sheep Spot. It's her organic Polworth spun by me. I kind of love this yarn. I can't believe we're giving I it know. away. But um, you were going to generate a random number, and then I was going to pull open the winners. We are doing this live because we thought maybe that'd be more fun. We had one, three, seven. <laughs> I hit generate and it's number one. It's number one. So the very first commenter that and please know if you go ooh. if you go on there, it's not post one, two, well, three, four, five, six. Post one is yeah. you. Yeah. So it's commenter. She just yeah. went down and counted the different people that commented. And if you commented more than once, she skipped you the second time you commented. So. Well, and since it was post one, it makes it really easy. So yes. it is L M E C O L L. L.M.E. Cole, and she posted her Cladonia. Oh, I love that pattern. So I, will I will dive that the yarn there. for that one. We're going to link to you and uh, Ear Burn You on Ravelry. And so just message. I think the yarn is here with you. Do you mind shipping it? No. Okay, so message Misty, Misty Dot on Ravelry, and to claim your prize, and she will ship it to you. So thank you so much for commenting and for watching L.M.E. Cole. I don't know how else to pronounce it. <laughs> so thank you. You won Cheap Spot. Yay! We need like uh, sound effects of like, I know. Or we could get your little voice on here to cheer and go, woo! <laughs> yeah. Okay, so next up we have awesome yarn um, sent to me by Annie Modisette of Mode Knit Yarn. You might also know her because she wrote the fabulous book, uh, Knitting Heretic, which was one of the first knitting books I ever read. And it's all about how that you can't knit wrong. Like if you're wrapping the wrong way, you just knit into it the next way you knit however you want it's a fabulous book um that's really cool it reminds me of something i saw on instagram today this lady said that um she had she had a picture of her finished sweater that she just knit and mm -hmm. she's like no pattern i just made it up i'm like <laughs> you just made it up just shut up just i used to up. do that all the time everything i knit was just like oh i made it up. i'll show you the cardigan i just I was like, I like that cable pattern. It's my favorite thing I've ever made, but... Oh, that's cool. So now I... I don't know. I lost my... So this is um, Mode Sock. It's 60% superwash merino, 30% bamboo, 10% nylon. It's machine wash and dry. And then it says, wear with bride. Modeknit.com. So thank you, Annie, for sending it to us. It's gorgeous, as it's you can see. It's very denim-y. I like it. It is. It's a... Ooh, um, it feels good to me. And it's a... Um, what's the word for it? Gradient. Gradient. So it will change as you knit. And what I would love to see knit out of this is um, a shawl that changes as you knit with it. So we are going to give it to one commenter on this week's uh, Ravelry post. Yeah, is mm -hmm. that how we want to do it? Sure. So leave a comment. Tell us. What do we want them to tell us? You know what I just remembered? We were going to talk about needle organization. Ooh, let's do that. Well, so you tell us about needle organization, and we will talk about ours next week. Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't bring my, I have a whole thing. <laughs> I just redid mine, so. Yay. I'm not totally done with it, but. Well, we, have to save, we have to save the whole conversation. Yeah. So we sometimes don't talk about things in when we I, see each yeah. other, because we're like, save it for the podcast. Yes, <laughs> we feel like that it will just be more flowy and natural if we don't, like, discuss everything. So. Exactly. So to win this, tell us about your needle organization. Um, bonus points if you actually take a picture and yeah. share it because we want to see um, maybe how horrifying it is so that we feel better about our own <laughs> yeah. situations or how inspiring it is. And we will share some of your solutions when we talk next week. Yes. Because we'll talk about our own and then we'll talk about yours. So tell us your needle organization in our group, Handmade Podcast on Ravelry. If you go to handmadepodcast.com, we'll give you the direct link to the place to comment so that you can win this gorgeous yarn from Modenit. Yay! Thanks, Annie. And then, oh, we mentioned on Ravelry there's coupon codes. Yes. That's the last thing we want to say. Um, the Euclips have a special coupon code, and someone else also uh, put a code there for our listeners. If you have a small business and you make yarn, uh, needles, spinning supplies, anything, <laughs> and you want to give a coupon code to our listeners, you can go there and leave it, and um, and that way everybody can see, and uh, that's a nice way of you sharing it with our community. Um, keep watch. I may do one for this weekend. I have not been very businessy lately. <laughs> I to You've been busy. I've been so crazy running errands and 
chopping living Christmas life. and living. And so, yeah, <laughs> hopefully I can get back to dyeing some more. I have some good things up my sleeve. Is that in the shop, that bag? You want to show it? Sure. Okay. Is it in the I shop? I have a couple bags. It is in the shop. It should be in the shop. It's so beautiful. And I have it stuffed with paper. And as you guys know, I love my Misty Out bags, and I, I have all of my projects in them. And They're so awesome. And the little pocket inside. I like to do the outside pocket, you know, yeah, the fabric. Yeah. And I, I love my little sheepy. These <laughs> things are my favorite. I love them. So you can find that at misty.xc.com. Mm -hmm. and, and I have a couple other. There's not that many right now. Ooh. I have this fall one. And for some reason, I cut the fabric wrong for the second one. So I'm going to have to go get more lining fabric. I cut the lining, I think, wrong. But okay. that's okay because it will make some cute little um, tiny bags. Tiny bags. Adorable. And I, I'm, I'm, the next thing I want to try and work on is some boxy bags. I haven't. Ooh, I excellent. thought I hadn't made a boxy bag, but I found one that I had made. <laughs> I was like, oh, look, I have. Those. I love and that. So I love that when you forget. I forget. You know, yeah. <laughs> People will come to me and say, oh, you made this. I'm like, really? <laughs> I did. Well, so you can find all of Misty's yarn and bags at misty.etsy.com and my uh, book that I mentioned in my classes at taraswiger.com and you can follow both of us on Twitter and Instagram. Come, um, oh, hashtag your pictures, Handmade Podcast. Yeah. So exciting. So um, Handmade Podcast, all one word in your hashtag. We'd love to see what you're working on when you watch and I, I feel like we're, we're really short this week, though. This is not short. Last not week. Short. So we were must have been just really long before. Exactly. So our uh, iPhone turns off after one hour of recording. <laughs> it is so you had to do like lots of little pieces yeah, last time. Okay. Um, but it's the holidays. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. So, are you going to work on stuff for you this weekend? Are you going to start new things? Ooh, are you going to work on Christmas gifts? Are you, you going to spend crazy? all of your time with the turkey and not get to yes. knit at all? Are we you would going, like to hear from you. Are you going Black Friday shopping? Are I do. You? A tiny bit. Yes, I do. Oh. I I do Black Friday shopping, and they since they start on Thanksgiving, I'm one of those ter terrible people who goes out on Thanksgiving. <laughs> and the only thing that I go out for though usually is movies. Um, it's oh. our tradition to open movies leading up to Christmas. That's our early open thing. I love it. So um, on when we have nothing to watch and we're all at home and it's cold outside and there's nothing to do, we spend all our money so we have no <laughs> <laughs> So um, we open movies on the weekends and that's the thing that the kids look forward to. I think that's adorable. And they're like, can we open a movie when we, when we um, do the tree? And that's when, that's when we start. Is yeah. After Thanksgiving, we put the tree and open a movie. I like and it. I was like, I haven't bought any yet. And they're like, what? <laughs> you got to have movies. And so, yeah, I have a whole list, though, I, you know, where they send out their the pay. I don't know if I ha if I really like the how they do it now or not. You know, used to, you, there was no Black Friday papers. They were super duper secret until <laughs> Black Friday. And yeah. then you had to stock. And, you know, that was the thing that you did on, on Thanksgiving is look through the sale papers and plan your stuff, you know. But now they come out way early and you go yeah. shopping on Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, yeah, we will be at Walmart with all the crazy masses and um, looking for movies. Excellent. Well, so but, we don't do – what we do is we have Thanksgiving with Jay's grandparents. Well, his grandparents have passed on, but – all of his extended aunts and uncles in Cleveland, Tennessee, and his aunts are crazy big Black Friday shoppers. I didn't even know this was a thing, that they would get the paper, and they will like, so after we all eat, they will go into the one of the bedrooms and spread it all out <laughs> across the bed, and then like make, they have all their notebooks, and then they like have claim, and so one day I came in, and they were like, oh, there are no coupons left. And I was like, no, I... I was not, <laughs> but there was, like, you're already <laughs> Don't crying. even. There's no now, coupons left. Now that I've been in the family 10 years, like, they will say, like, Tur, do you want some of these coupons? And I'm oh, like, how nice. I made it to coupon <laughs> level swagger. There you um, go. That's great. But, but then we drive from there to my mom's house either Thursday night or Friday morning, and we, like, lay around in our PJs all day. So we already have a cinnamon roll recipe we're going to make. and Ooh, awesome. My mom already made uh, these awesome enchiladas she has in the freezer we'll eat, and, like, we don't get out of our PJs. We watch movies and just like lay there. <laughs> I made sticky buns this past weekend for this mm. uh, recipe exchange brunch uh -huh. thing at the church. I messed them up. 
<laughs> oh no. I mean, I've made this recipe for years, but I decided they had, you know, they have samples at Sam's. And so they were sampling these biscuits and they were frozen. And I like the frozen biscuits anyway, because you think canned biscuits, yeah, you know. Well, the recipe calls for canned biscuits. So I thought, oh, I'll just, you know, thaw these out and Oh substitute. no. No. <laughs> if I'd have cooked them another 30 minutes or something, maybe, because yeah, they totally didn't get done. But I was riding with my mom, which hence I left my bag in my mom's car. And so she picked me up and she was there and I could, there was no more baking time. And so I had to take them and, and I, once we got there, <laughs> you know, once we got there, we realized there's not all the way done. Oh my goodness. And so I warned everybody. I was like, yeah, I used the wrong kind of biscuits, you know, picked from the outside. And it was still, a lot of people ate them because the outside was done. It was just the inside that was not. Mm -hmm. So at least they didn't go to total waste. Well, you are so chill. Like every time I've ever had to go someplace with oh, something baked, did you like? I like cry if my recipe oh, doesn't work no, out. I'm like, I'm like, hey, I screwed up. Yeah. Let me tell you what I did. I was doing some praying that morning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so while we were there, um, they asked me, you guys, if you don't want to listen to us ramble, we love we're you. We're all done with the knitting part yeah, of the show. We're all done with the knitting. <laughs> this is just live stuff. But if you don't want to listen to us, we love you anyway, and we'll see you next time. But yeah, so. They asked me, they said, Pastor Fred is preaching tomorrow instead of our normal pastor. He, he said he's preaching, and um, Matt's, we're really kind of close to them. And, and uh, his wife asked me, she's like, he needs five mini loaves of bread. Do you, is that something you can do? Would, do you make bread? And I'm like, yeah, I think I can do that. And so I'm like, okay. So I go home. I have no recipe. I don't usually make bread. I sometimes <laughs> make bread. You should have asked me. I have a great recipe. So okay. I totally did Pinterest. <laughs> there you <laughs> so go. So I try a new recipe out, and I just follow the directions and do it and um, bake them. And they look pretty. I got those little tin, you know, mm -hmm. disposable tins. And, yeah. And, you know, it doesn't say how long to bake mini tins. It gives you the recipe oh. for two bread loaves, you know. So I put them on the cookie sheet and kind of stagger them back and forth, you know, and bake them and check on them and bake them some more and check on them. I'm like, okay, they look done. I thought it was just going to be an object lesson. So he gets up <laughs> and he's got these in a basket and he's got one out and he's holding it and he's talking about it. And the, the lesson was about um, feeding the masses with the, the five loaves and two fish. fish. And it was really cool, the, perspe the different perspective he put on it. It was really neat. But anyway, he, he starts talking about it, and I'm like, oh, Lord, if he's going to, like, break these, please, if they're not done in the middle, I pray for a miracle. <laughs> I pray for a miracle. Fix them right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> so he's, like, talking about them, and sure enough, he brings, like, 12 guys up. He This is not unusual for him. He breaks th those. He goes and gets another one, breaks them, and gives each person a piece of it. Then they start passing them out to everybody. Now, before he even did this, he's like, I'd like to thank Mr. Dotton for making this for me. <laughs> so I'm like, it's over now. If this is bad, everybody knows I didn't make it because he's already said <laughs> it. But thankfully, everybody's like, oh, that was good, you know, because I was like, whew. Yeah, because it could have been, like, gooey. Like, it could have totally been gooey in the middle because oh, I didn't goodness. cut into them. I was, I was like what if he needs them all pretty i can't cut into one you know right you you are so chill like <laughs> we make so for this for thanksgiving we always bring stuff to jay's family's house so that there's something like vegetarian there for us yeah and i do test runs like two <laughs> to six weeks in advance i make everything we're gonna make before i bring it and i eat it and so we actually did it jay wanted to take this meatloaf he makes which isn't meat it's walnuts and oats and beans like blended up it tastes awesome when he makes it it usually has chili powder and barbecue sauce on top and really you put barbecue sauce on anything it's great oh yeah so <laughs> um but he was like i think we can make it thanksgiving-y with like sage and thyme and i was like okay well you should try that before so we we're supposed to try it like two weeks but he kept putting it off putting it off so we did it this weekend and it's just it tastes like stuffing but it's like, do you really want a loaf of stuffing flavored stuff right next to the stuffing? So we decided not to make it. Oh, and he makes this awesome mushroom gravy and he put it on top. Mm. So then we had a whole like, we don't have time to test another recipe before we go. So I could not do the like, <laughs> let me make you bread that everybody has with the cinnamon rolls. I have to like, I mean, the cinnamon rolls we're going to make my mom's house. My mom's house is totally chill. It's just us, you know, us and her and my little brothers. They don't care. I've tested those twice already to like You're get so the funny. sugar cinnamon. Pastor I'm... Fred came over and I'm like, um, I was gonna make chili and he, his wife was like, well, he doesn't really like chili. I'm like, okay. So 
I totally tried a new recipe out on them. <laughs> and they're like, he's like, heck yeah, I'll feed your guinea pig anytime. And thankfully, it turned out good. My cornbread did not, but just mm-hmm. because I put it in a, I had like an oversized cast iron skillet. Yes. And I normally, do, I don't make cornbread. So yeah. I had like my grandmother's recipe, but the skillet was too big and it did not turn out at all. Uh, so I was like, sorry. So I just chill. warned you. I was like, this ain't good. I'm telling you now. So what's funny about this though is you're so chill about food, but with your your knitting and your oh, yard, you want it to so be picky. perfect. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, whatever. But I get I I think part of it is being a vegetarian for so long. Other people have an idea about what vegetarian food's going to taste like. So like that's why I bring you the awesome cookies, <laughs> so that Matt is like vegetarianism is delicious. <laughs> you know. So I always feel like I'm not just standing for like me and my ability, but for for. For not meat eaters everywhere, yes. and that's a lot of pressure. Whereas with my knitting, I'm like, whatever, I'm the only one to look at it. Well, now thousands of you. Oh, yes. So, so thank you for sticking with yes, us and, and hanging out. Our Thanksgiving cooking right. <laughs> yes, so. and we want to hear what you do for Black Friday for Thanksgiving. Yes, chat uh, with us. We'd of, love to hear it. Of course, if you're Canadian, you had your Thanksgiving like a month ago, and, mm-hmm. and we missed it. So sorry about I that. Saw some Instagram pictures. That was awesome. <laughs> Have a really great day and a happy Thanksgiving happy weekend. Thanksgiving. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye.